to give us information on COVID-19 uh, booster as well as the influenza vaccine. Dr. Lena Lee is in the studio with me, and she happens to be the Medical Officer of Health for the Leeds, Grenville, and Lanark District Health Unit. Dr. Lee, welcome to the program. Thank you. So can you please tell us what is the status of this respiratory se- in this respiratory season with respect to the presence? What, what is happening in our community? Yeah, so uh, a few things to talk about. One is COVID-19 transmission continues to be high and sustained um, over the past month or so. I think really? probably people are hearing about people around them getting sick oh. and getting tested, et cetera, et cetera. So, so we do have transmission of COVID-19. That is in keeping with what's happening around the province. So um, there's lots of COVID-19 circulating. Uh, we do continue to see outbreaks in in high risk settings such as long term care homes and retirement yes. homes, but our hospitalization and severe outcome rates remain relatively low, um, and as expected, similar to what we would have seen with other strains of COVID nineteen previously. And so, so that's the COVID nineteen situation for flu as of actually. Um, yesterday, or maybe the day before, is when we got our first report of positive flus in our region. So we know that flu is definitely circulating in our region now. Um, I've been saying it's like, you know, the game of hearts, where like once one heart comes out, then you can play any heart you want. Yes. So it's like that, right? Like once <laughs> flu has started circulating, you know that more flu is coming. Right. Um, and so we're sort of starting that. Uh, and, and that's to be expected over the, the fall winter season every year. Year. We have flu starting mm-hmm. in and around this time mm-hmm. and then going into, uh, you know, the holiday season and then into the new year as well. We are expecting an extended flu season this year, um, especially compared to last year. That's based on um, the transmission patterns in the southern hemisphere, which oftentimes um, foreshadows what happens in the northern hemisphere. I see. Um, and in terms of RSV transmission, we continue to see ongoing RSV transmission that is happening now it will we expect continue to happen through the respiratory season as well as other respiratory viruses what we call cold viruses right. those we are continuing to see and expecting to see throughout the season um, and more or less it will be similar to what we've experienced last year with perhaps a more sustained season a longer period of transmission compared to what we saw last year but our numbers are nothing compared to last year Correct. Yeah. So, <laughs> so s- certainly yes. this time last year, things were um, uh, hopping a great deal more, mm-hmm. um, and so we're yes. we're expecting, you know, rising transmission um, and then a longer season compared to last year. The for people out there that that luckily have not had COVID or they didn't get the flu, mm-hmm. what should they? look at and how do they determine, well, it could be the flu or it could be yeah. COVID. I wonder which it is. What is the difference? What should they be looking for? Yeah, so I'll maybe distinguish that um, and a third one, which is sort of like common cold sort of symptoms. Yes. So uh, the first thing to say is there's a lot of overlap. And so you oftentimes can't tell for sure. Okay. Um, Certainly some things to point out for flu, you're more likely to have fever um, and less likely to have cough. Uh, compared to the common cold. Okay. Um, so you're less likely to have fever and more likely to have cough. But again, it's not, it's like more or less likely. It's not yes. absolutes, right? right. Um, for COVID-19, it runs the full spectrum. Some people have even as mild as a headache mm-hmm. with no other respiratory symptoms, yes. all the way to you really incapacitated for a couple of days, knocked out in bed, right? So like that full spectrum, yes. plus minus fever, plus minus um, coughs and and sore mm-hmm. throats, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the benefit of uh, the 
COVID-19 rapid test is that you can say, you know, if you have a rapid test and it's positive, then you know you definitely got COVID-19. If you have a rapid test and it's negative, it's not totally, um, the, the rapid test will miss about 30% of, of people who actually do have the COVID-19 infection. Okay. Mm -hmm. For flu and, for example, RSV and other respiratory or cold viruses, there are tests. Most people will not be eligible for testing. Um, those tests are typically reserved for or those living in long-term care homes and retirement yes. homes. Um, small children sometimes will be eligible for testing, et cetera. Um, but in general, um, one of the other things to consider is that although, um, although they may be very similar, COVID-19 in particular is worth getting a rapid test or if you're eligible, getting a PCR test at the pharmacy because there is still effectiveness for Paxilvid to treat the COVID-19 infection. The other viruses don't really have significant treatment. And so, you know, it's less important to know specifically which virus you have. COVID-19, yes. there is the possibility of treatment. A large number of people are eligible for that treatment. So it is useful to know. So the, the screening test, mm -hmm. can people still obtain these from the phar pharmacy? Yeah, so the, that COVID-19 rapid test, the take home that you do, yes. you swab your own nose, right? And you, like do the little chemistry experiment, uh -huh. um, that you can get in a number of places. Some f um, pharmacies will carry it, some grocery stores will carry it, some community settings. So, um, you know, if you're going to your local clinic or um, your uh, local municipality every once in a while they may be carrying it um the one place that i know for sure will carry it is the health unit so yes. so every health unit branch um that uh we have locally in lgl um we have those rapid tests available come pick it up mm -hmm. um you can take as many as you'd like and um, there's no charge and, right and there's no charge okay yeah mm -hmm. and and uh please do if if you're concerned about COVID-19 transmission, especially if you're eligible for Paxlovid, that medication, then you know it's definitely worth knowing whether it's COVID-19 or something yes. else. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. I, I agree. I totally agree. So um, the COVID-19 booster and, and flu shots, are they available at the health unit? Yeah, so uh, lots to say on this one. Yes, okay. <laughs> uh, so, I'll separate it out for yes. flu and then COVID. So okay. for flu vaccines, they are available at pharmacies and um, healthcare providers. The okay. the um, health unit does not do flu vaccines for most, uh, almost well, really for our only staff is the only people we vaccinate for flu. Yes. Um, and that's been consistent all along. So this, you know, it really isn't a surprise, I think, or a difference for, for people. Um, it, we do have coverage, good coverage all around our communities mm -hmm. um, for availability of flu vaccines um, at pharmacies and healthcare providers. And so um, that I think people usually sort of have a routine they know. Yeah. Um, and uh, mm -hmm. this week is when we started getting flu vaccine um, doses yes. become available. So I know okay. um, the province has been talking a lot and even we are talking a lot about preparing for the vaccines, but then we didn't have any in our area <laughs> physically yet. <laughs> right. So now they are available for the flu. So they're here. For COVID-19 vaccine, um, this is uh, some changes. So for one, um, the health units, we are not going to be doing those large scale community based clinics um, for COVID-19 the way that we did in the past. Right. And part of that has to do with our, our own capacity. But the other part of it is that actually there is good coverage for availability of mm -hmm. those vaccines in pharmacies and yes. healthcare providers, oh, mostly among pharmacies. Uh -huh. um, right. And so do check in with your pharmacy. We've um, checked and mapped in our region that there is good coverage um, and availability and access um, through pharmacies. We will be making um, COVID-19 clinics at our local branch offices available for a subset of people. And so I, I won't get into the details, but it's certainly on our website who would be eligible to be vaccinated okay. um, at the health unit. Right. Um, 
um, we do have a small number of, of clinics that will be open to people who might not be able to get access through the pharmacy. That will happen probably mid-November. Um, and then the last piece to know is there is the COVID-19 vaccine. There's a new strain um, covered in the new COVID-19 vaccine. That specific COVID-19 vaccine is in our region right now, but only for long-term care home and retirement home residents and other high-risk individuals this week. Okay. Starting early November, that new COVID-19 vaccine formulation will be available to the general public for pharmacies to administer. And so I think one of the things that's been happening is people really are eager to get the vaccine. They've been asking pharmacies and the pharmacies have been saying, you know, we don't actually have any physical vaccines. Right. Um, so, you know, there is there is vaccine coming. Um, it's just we we haven't received it from the province yet to administer. We just um, have to be patient, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It is yeah. around the corner. It's <laughs> it's around the corner. It's good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It, it'll be en route soon. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us about the RSV vaccine? Yeah. So the RSV vaccine is a new vaccine that's been licensed by Health Canada for administration to older adults. Okay. Um, it is a vaccine. So so um, I think we talked a little bit about RSV um, at the very beginning, yes. right? Yes. So it is transmitting in our region. Every year, um, the populations at greatest risk for transmission and also severe outcomes is young children, especially infants, and then older adults, especially older adults um, living in congregate settings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so the, this vaccine has been licensed um, by Health Canada in Ontario, there are two groups that will be eligible. Um, one group, the first is um, residents over the age of, I believe, 60 or 65, I believe it's 60, who are um, residents of long-term care homes and a select group of retirement homes. Those residents will receive the RSV vaccine for free. Um, and it will be administered through where they're living. Yes. Um, other people who are over the age of, again, I think it's over the age of 60, Yes. Um, are eligible for the vaccine, but they would have to pay for it out of pocket. They would need to have a prescription from a healthcare provider, um, and they would need to get that, uh, purchase that vaccine, um, I believe, um, the ballpark number is sort of 200 to $300. Um, it is a single dose of vaccine at this time. It is available through pharmacies, um, but not, not covered. So that's the distinction, those two groups of individuals. Mm -hmm. yes. Those who are under the age of um, what has been licensed for Health Canada, so I believe it's 60 and younger, they're not actually eligible for the vaccine because there's no licensing, or the, the vaccine is not licensed for people. Um, of that uh, age group? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Okay. And so even if you wanted it, even if you were willing to pay for it, um, it, it, it um, I mean, you could speak to your healthcare provider, mm -hmm. um, but as a general rule, um, it's not going to be available for those age groups. Right. This is a vaccine where there continues to be developments. And so in the future, so not probably this season, but in future seasons, there may be changes to coverage, um, availability, eligibility, et cetera. So, so um, keep an eye. Yes. eye out for that down the road right right so uh, just follow follow the news and see what was <laughs> yeah, going to be yeah. happening to it um so people that that want to more if they want more information is the key to go to the health unit website yeah, I'm really proud of our website. I think it's fantastic. We have so much information on it. There's a lot. So, yeah, so our Health Unit website is indeed healthunit.org. So healthunit.org. 
Um, if you go to the health information section, section there's a immunization section that you can click on and we have all sorts of information. Yes. So, you know, there's lots of immunizations out there. We have um, information about COVID-19 and flu vaccines. We have information about um, who is eligible to receive the COVID-19 vaccine directly through the mm -hmm. health unit. Yes. Um, and then, of course, people can also call us um, right. at the health unit and we have um, really knowledgeable staff and especially our nurses, if there's specific questions that people have. We won't give personal health um, advice, of course. Oh, no, no, uh, no, no. But, but certainly, you know, information about the vaccine, yes. um, uh, information about the respiratory season, all of that. And the last thing that I'll mention is uh, people may know that we have a COVID-19 um, data dashboard on our website um, with up-to-date numbers on, on COVID-19. Um, we will be shifting that dashboard to expand it to so it will continue to, to include COVID-19 but yes. will expand also flu and other respiratory viruses and syndromics of surveillance. As time goes on. Yeah exactly right. and so um, yeah. keep an eye out for that mm -hmm. that's on our website as well. Thank you for sitting down with me. It's yeah, always it's my a, pleasure. It, well it's always it's always nice to sit with you you're so knowledgeable you tell us what we need to know so thank, thank you. you for that. Yeah.